Good evening, folks. Lisa Ziegler coming to you here from the Gardener's Workshop Farm. And this afternoon, we're taking a look at our home cutting garden. And I'm kind of last minute because I didn't realize that my phone wasn't really charged. So I'm trying to find a good spot out of the sun here. Y'all bear with me just a minute here. Okay. Um, didn't realize my phone wasn't charged till the very last minute anyway, so I've just spun out here at the last second. So I hope everybody's had a good Father's Day, happy Father's Day. And I know that um, that's not always a great day for everybody and I feel for those people too, right? So um, we're checking in. We don't have a lot going on here in our cutting garden yet, which we'll take a look at it in a minute. I'm gonna, um, I may have to move because Henry, that's our neighbor, um, may or may not stop barking. We'll see what happens with Henry in just a minute. So welcome, we've been following along. I believe this is week seven of our little home cutting garden. And um, for those of you that haven't been with us before, welcome. My name is Lisa Mason Ziegler and I am a commercial cut flower farmer and I'm an urban farmer. My little commercial farm is right in the middle of the city. I'm totally surrounded by about 200,000 residents. Um, my farm is pretty tiny, and I have taken what I do on, well, I say on a grand scale, but I think it's not as grand as most people think. I mean, my acre and a half cutting garden, which is what I've grown for about 23 years now, um, when most farmers see here, acre and a half, that's all you have. It's amazing how productive a little cutting garden can be. So my big commercial garden is about an acre and a half. And what I've done is taken what I do on that big scale and squished it down to a three by 10 foot cutting garden that gives about one to two handfuls of flowers a week once they start blooming. So it's really a lot of fun. And I think the introduction of this, we introduced um, seed collections for cutting gardens, gosh, I guess back in 2005. And they have just really taken off because first off, people just don't realize that a three by 10, like y'all, that's the size, that's smaller than a picnic table, right? That a three by 10 bed planted with the right flowers, all from seed, whether you start them inside or plant them outdoor in the garden, and there is still time to plant them this year. Um, for most folks, if you still have um, four months of frost-free time left where you are, um, then you have plenty of time to still plant this little garden. But this little garden will give two big handfuls of flowers a week. It is the perfect little cutting garden complement to your landscape. You know, if you have a garden or if you have landscape where you snip flowers from, this is the garden that's going to give you the color that you need from week to week. Um, and it's going to give you flowers, y'all. You're going to become the number one invited person to parties during the season because the hostess gift you bring is a fresh bouquet from your garden. It's like nothing else, y'all. So I love introducing people to this concept. And um, so that's what this journey has been. You can find the previous week's videos. I'm just thinking where they are. They're on my blog on our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, which is where you can find the seed collection, which is called What's it called? Cut Flower Garden Seed Collection. It's like 20 bucks. And um, it has directions and enough seeds to plant the garden. And um, you can find, I'm sorry y'all, my mind just went off on something else. I just saw something in the background. If any of y'all had that done, it's just been a really hairy day here today. And we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, so you can find everything, the blogs. Um, so if you go to my blog at thegardenersworkshop.com and go to the Lisa Live videos, and then at the top of those pages, there's a tag that says cutting garden. If you hit that tag, that brings up most of the videos. We are behind in getting them uploaded because we just have so much work going on here at the farm and on our online courses and um, it's just, there's been a lot going on. So we're doing our best to get them loaded up. 
and um, you can watch all of them. And I'll do a little review of what we've done here. And also, for guys that haven't joined us before, this is our catalog. We still have catalogs that we're putting in our orders. Um, and so you'll get this. This is, this is the sunflower that I planted in our cutting garden. This is the white light, and the dark circle is the white night our new favorite sunflower and um so this you'll get the catalog as well as one of our gardeners workshop pens we just got a brand new um order in for those guys um so let's just review what we've done and then we'll take a look at where we are today and then we're going to talk about japanese beetles y'all I've got, I got the best crop of Japanese beetles this year that I have had in many years. And I'll t share with you what I do about them that makes a significant decrease for years to come. So, the little cutting garden um, is three by 10. I actually split mine in half. So you can see the diagram. I actually split mine in half and made two three by five beds and when I step back so you can see the front of this end this is what this building's called behind me um, how it flanks the front of them and there was no garden here before we started this garden it was lawn and so what I did when I decided to do this I had to jump into action quickly and of course um, we don't use herbicides um, to kill grass um, so what I did is I laid down um, cardboard um, the size of my bed and then I put rocks big rocks which you'll see or which are actually the border of my bed and kind of add a little interest to it to hold the cardboard down and then I proceeded to fill that up with a mix of things um, I gathered up all the containers on this farm that had so potting soil in them that I knew that I wasn't gonna plant this year and dumped it in. Then whatever I needed to finish filling it up, I made it 50-50 potting soil, just regular old potting soil, and 50% um, compost. You can buy it in the bag anywhere, y'all, so it's readily available. And then I added dry organic fertilizer. Our crab and lobster fertilizer is amazing. Well, it's not ours. It's Neptune Harvest, right? They have the best. We just love their products. Um, and it's a um, source from a sustain sustainable um, flow of ingredients. So we really love it. Um, so I mixed the dry fertilizer in and then I planted transplants um, and I talk about that in the previous Facebook lives why we prefer let's see I still don't know if we have any we planted some seeds over here one week we'll look at that when we get over there um, plants are always more successful in general and we choose to only use transplants however all of the seeds in this collection can be direct sown um, and then I planted the garden and we've been watching it grow and getting it set up and then I mulched it with more compost once the plants were about three to five inches tall. And then last week or the week before, I can't even remember, we netted it. And we'll take a look at all of that. So let's have, um, I'm gonna stand up from here. Oh, first, I really wanted to show you this is just one of the bouquets that Suzanne just made. Um, for this is for one of our drop-off subscriptions tomorrow and I love to call this time of the year where the warm season flowers which is what we have planted here zinnias sunflowers coxcomb um, and the lemon basil this bouquet represents those flowers because they've started blooming out in our big commercial garden as well as our cool flowers which is the name of my book of those flowers that can be planted in the fall for many people but also in very early spring um, which would have been months ago um, and so the cool flowers in here are these blue scabbies the dill the black-eyed Susans, and we grow several different types of Rudbeckia. I'm just looking here. This yarrow that's down here. <clears throat> and this Bupleurum, which is what this little flower is. And now we're adding in Xenias, Celosia. There's no sunflowers in here. So this is like a marriage made in heaven. And I'll tell you the truth that... Um, we're working on an online little, an on-demand course of 
having both beds, having a bed of cool flowers and a bed of warm season flowers so that you can really extend your season. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you because I needed to bring um, this little container out here to cut because I'm gonna show you while there's not any real flowers blooming yet, some of our basil is ready to cut and you might as well cut it and put it with something else from your yard or just enjoy the fragrance inside. Because here's the thing, um, when I was cutting flowers yesterday for Suzanne to make these bouquets for delivery, one of the things that I think a lot of people think, because I even do it, but I know I've trained myself to not think this way. I think to myself, this basil that's really kind of ready to, to cut here, I think, oh, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna not cut it yet. I'll save it for later. Well, here's the thing, y'all. You're gonna see all the side shoots that are on this basil. The minute we cut that central stem out that's ready to be used, it could be used culinary, you can cook with it, but it's the variety that we grow for the best bouquet. Um, it holds up, right? Those other stems are gonna kick into gear and that's gonna make them get ready faster. If you leave a stem of anything, a flower or basil or anything, thinking that you're saving it for later, when you do that, the flowers that should have been coming on quicker for later kind of slow their, their system down. So um, I just really wanted to show that. So let's see here. I am going to, gonna pick us up and move us here. Let me get myself situated here. I do have um, maybe two zinnias that are ready to be cut, so let's I'll answer questions after I get through what we're looking at here. And let's see here, let me turn you around. So first off, let's step back and have a look at the cutting garden. So this is the three, the three by 10 bed split in two. So that's a three by five and that's a three by five. And you can see that there's not really a lot of color yet. Um, we're, we, you know, this garden was so delayed because of all the cool temperatures. Um, so let's walk up here and just have a look. So the first thing that's gonna be ready right after this basil that we're gonna look at are these sunflowers. They are pretty much right on the brink. Um, so it will not be long for them. Coxcomb is not ready yet, and you can see the green netting that we installed. So what the netting does is not just hold up flowers. People think of wind as the real culprit problem, but in fact, it's the torrential downpours, which we are just so blame um, famous for around here. And I wanna show you, we talked about this one week. Let me get out of that sun about this last week. I don't see any of our sunflower seeds that we planted coming up. And y'all, that's why I just don't direct seed much. See how some of these sunflower, in this situation, in this tight cutting garden, and the reason it's so tight is once you start cutting it, it's like doing a heavy pruning um, twice a week. Two things I just noticed, look at that. That is definitely a deer snip. And look up here. There are our Japanese beetles, and we're gonna talk about them in a minute. But what I wanted to share was, in this tight cutting garden situation, I would just pluck. Well, this actually, this sunflower is the one that's missing its head. Because those leaves are kind of shading, some of the other flowers that are right around it, there is nothing, I mean, when you pull these leaves off, it in fact kind of helps the heads um, get a little bit bigger faster. You know what I mean? It's just less vegetation for it to have to. So you can feel free to do that and see, especially back in here. Y'all, I do things with y'all that I just never have to, I would never take the time to do otherwise and it's necessary. And see how that just kind of cleared the way for those flowers that are around there. So this is the lemon basil, and this is really the way that I like to cut it. See where there's the flower has elongated, but it's not blooming yet? 
let me show you where to make the cut and I think y'all are going to be really surprised. So before I cut it, let's take a look. Look at all of this vegetation down here. And where I'm going to cut it, I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to show you guys right where I cut it. I am actually, and I, this morning when I was um, cutting flowers, I thought how, you know, I, I'm a really fast harvester, obviously, after doing it for 20-some years, that I am not nearly as focused as I used to be about getting it in the exact spot. You want to know how I, I go deep. I go so deep this morning, I realized that sometimes I cut zinnias and basil and coxcomb and stuff almost, I mean, at ground level because they quit re-sprout. Let's see if I move away. All right, let's look here. I'm trying to make it so you can see. If you whoop. see the, the wooden stem, that is the central stem, and that's what we're gonna cut. And I'm gonna cut it, but I, I'm gonna have to look at what I'm doing here. <laughs> this is kind of comical call, y'all. I am within an inch of the ground. So I am going to A, pull it down through the netting because look at all this branching. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. But looky here, this is what's left. This and all of these little side shoots, that big guy keeps getting in the way. And all these little side shoots are gonna kick into high gear. See, next time you'd be cutting this guy. And because you have like, I think there's like 10 plants. Um, in this plant or in that I have planted here, you have a plenty of basil. And you can see, so this is my finger. You can see how close to that, my finger is on ground level. You can see how close to the ground I cut. And why do you do that? Because more strong, straight stems are gonna sprout right here where you made the cut. And if you make the cut up higher, it just produces short, stubby, Stem. So let's have a look at this because I can't do this and let y'all see what I'm doing holding it. So what would happen, uh, maybe I can put it back in the stand. I am going to strip everything off of this stem except for what you see in my hand. See that? All of this mess below. Um, this is how it looks when you have cut the central stem out. And let me just see about, let me see if I can't, I don't have my gloves on either, but let me lift this up and see. All right, so I'm going to, normally I would never do this without having gloves on y'all. But the way that I do it when I'm out in the garden is I just take the stem and hold it about right here and literally just pull off all this extra vegetation. Yes, you can eat with all that. You can do whatever you want. But when you have as many, and I in fact take those off too, because the reality is this is all that's going to show in your bouquet. This is enough to be super fragrant and any removing all that excess increases the vase life greatly. So this is what you're left with, y'all. People are so, and I in fact would take those off because they don't, this is all that really shows. And so there's your first cutting lesson, y'all. Um, that's what, how you harvest basil. So let me, I'm just gonna drop that into, um, you of course will take, um, water to the garden and always um, don't ever walk around the garden cutting stuff especially basil basil is always cut first thing in the morning and um, I mean I do it like at 6 6 to 7 a.m. before the Sun even really gets going we cut it get it in the water in the buckets and we take it right into the building and it holds up really really beautifully so that's the only thing we're gonna to cut today. And as the garden gets more and more um, mature, then we'll come along. But let me tell you what I do about Japanese beetles. Let's turn this around. 
So we are having a heck of a time with Japanese beetles. And they do a lot of damage. Like this sunflower is probably pretty much trashed, maybe. And so certainly you can squish them by hand. But this is what I suggest to do that we've done here for years. And I actually talk about it and show it in Vegetables Love Flowers is a small bucket with soapy water, like your dishwashing liquid soapy, and that just kind of coats the beetles. So once they get in there, they can't get out of it to fly away because they are very smart. I'll tell you a little story about that in just a second. Um, but this is what you do. You walk out and I find that early in the morning before the sun comes up and they're really active and very apt to, they're really not awake is the way I think of it. So when you get to them, they can't fly away quite quick enough. So you walk out with your little container. And so if my hand was a jar, depends on how big your garden is. If you have a garden this size, you could walk outside with a jar, a mason. You want probably about a five inch wide opening at the top to make it easier to get them. You just simply walk up and put your container under where they are and then tap the bloom and they all fall in. You don't have to touch them. And you know, I'm married to a plumber, y'all. He says it's perfectly fine to flush them. Um, and so that's what we do. You don't have to squish them. You don't have to do anything. Um, you can leave them coated in the soap. Um, and, you know, you can demise, dispose of them any way you want. Um, but that's what we do with them. And just remember this. Every beetle that you eliminate, eliminates 20 for next year. They aren't laying eggs in your soil. Um, and we have had super duper control of Japanese beetles up until this year. And I mean, we're not crawling in them. However, we've never really found them on the flowers that I am seeing them on now. They're on Celosia, they're on everything. So the, um, when I was harvesting yesterday, it took me twice as long and I got half as many flowers because guess what I was doing? Squishing Japanese beetles, right? So that is the Japanese beetle um, tip. And again, thegardenersworkshop.com. And if you guys like and share this broadcast, that's what really helps me with Facebook and allows me to keep doing all these really fun um, Facebook Lives showing you guys how we do it and um, on this home garden how to have this little cutting garden in your backyard, right? So I wanted to um, also just update everybody, anybody that's following along with us. Our, we we um, offer online courses and our two flagship flower farming school courses have their registration, which is just once a year for five days, open today for the rest of this week. And I mean, it's just been really awesome. And I wanted to just, the I field a lot of questions, the girls forward, the questions that people submit about everything. And, you know, one of the things that um, just keeps kind of coming up over and over again, this is not, you would think that the middle of the season is probably not the best time for people to stop and take a course. But in fact, there's two courses on sale. There's um, my course, which is the basics, the fundamentals of the business of starting a flower farm, um, you know, building beds, growing annuals, cool season and warm season and harvesting and conditioning um, and how to learn how to sell and who to sell to, all those things. But the other course, which is Dave Dowling's course called Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and More, most of that stuff has to be ordered and planted in the fall. So this is really the perfect time. His course runs first at the end of the summer, and then mine runs in November, but they're both on sale now. And a lot of folks are saying, how in the world, you know, would you make time and, you know, I just wanted to share the thought that kind of popped in my mind when I was reading one such email today um, is that we have thousands of students, y'all, and they, many of which, I think I'm thinking of three of them right now that I personally know, um, that were moms, moms of multiple children and young kids and the, how they 
whoops, didn't, didn't secure that very good. <laughs> they were moms and they just decided that they really, really wanted to have to find a flat spot, y'all, which is not always easy around here. Okay, I'll move my chair. Um, anyway, so a question that I keep getting over and over again is, um, you know, having time to do it, right? Um, and my feeling is that part of my course is included in my course is about how to clear your, how to evaluate what you're spending your time on to be able to become a flower farmer. Uh, it's really about the same thing that moms do, right? I mean, moms have a million things to do all the time and it's your system of how you figure out what's important, what's not, what you let go. Well, it's the same thing in business, y'all. And so for me, it's like these moms were such great case studies on how does a mother of four young kids um, take the time to take an online course to learn how to start a business. And, you know, my feeling is if she can do it, anybody can, right? Um, they were just really great um, examples of that. And you, for me, the bottom line is, it's just making the commitment and getting serious about what you wanna do, whether you wanna become a flower farmer or just up your game on gardening. If you're an avid gardener, um, Dave's course for sure is an amazing um, next level in gardening with his bulbs, perennials, and woodies. Um, but when you decide to stop dabbling in an area of whatever it is you wanna do, um, because the reality is, we all have the same number of hours in a day, right? It's what we do with those hours. And what I found when I moved outside of my little circle to learn how to do different things is I was just doing the wrong stuff. I'm not doing more stuff now than I was before I had this business. I'm just doing more of the right things because I got direction. Um, so I just spend, so these folks are making that decision. And um, so if anybody has questions about how online courses work, um, I'll be happy to answer them here. I'm gonna look at the questions and see if there's anybody that got, has questions on here. So, hey, everybody. Um, we got people from all over. So, I'm just looking. Hi, Lisa, from Long Island, New York. I just signed up for your class. Welcome, Katie. You will not be sorry. I just signed up for your classes. I've been binge watching all your old Facebook lives. I love how helpful you are. So glad I stumbled across your website. You know, um, I'm glad you said that. Um, Katie, because one of the things that I shared, I did a, an impromptu Facebook Live last night at like nine o'clock, sitting in my garden. It was just so beautiful outside last night. And I was sharing that one of our students, I think it was from 2018, she shared, um, it was on a post about the courses coming out or something, and she kind of gave her a little testimonial, totally unsolicited, of how available I am or how present I am. And so for folks that, and my phone is saying I have low battery, so we may just have to change our location. I'm just gonna walk. I have the cord in my pocket. Um, part of, <clears throat> one of the things that's tough for me is really having time to stop and really consider what some of the things we offer and do and give people, how that helps and affects them. And my natural, my business is a reflection of me and the way that we do business and our online courses. My, our online courses, um, I kind of stepped outside of the box and I set them up to be very different than what many people do. Um, we are really available. We've set them up so our instructors do live. I'm gonna turn this around so that y'all are looking at my other garden, but I have a plug right here. Let me just plug my phone in. So y'all look at the garden for a minute. The sun is pretty bad there, but y'all look at that for just a minute while I find the plug, which I see. 
right down here. Can't believe I didn't charge my phone. All right. So let me get my seat here. Okay, sorry. Um, so it, I don't always have time to sit and realize just how it impacts people. And what Rachel was sharing was how present and given more than people expect. Um, and so she was talking about that during the course, of course, the court, these schools are six weeks long. You watch the videos each week when they get into your library, which is about two to three to four hours even sometimes. Um, lots of little videos, but when they're ganged together, they're that long. Then you have a live Q&A with the instructor after you've had opportunity to watch your course, your classes. And I mean, we, when I sign on, I am a publisher also of online courses for other flower farmers because they're amazing teachers. And when I sign them on, that is part of their deal, is that they have to be present um, and ready to give. So in addition to the live Q&As each week to answer any question that comes that's not covered in the course, as well as we do a wrap-up live Q&A two weeks after the courses are over to kind of give you time to process. But in addition to that, we have private Facebook groups and in those private Facebook groups are all the students, not all, about a third of our students never choose to be on Facebook. They're not Facebook users, which is fine. Um, but when you're in a Facebook group with the other people that are doing what you're doing, struggling with maybe what you're struggling with, the love and support that is shared amongst members is really pretty phenomenal. But in addition to that, your instructor, so during school, your instructor is very present in that Facebook group. But even after school is over and done, your instructor still checks in. Um, I'll say about once a week. That doesn't mean it depends on what time of year it is as far as, because these people are flower farmers, right? Um, but you really are never left hanging. And um, that's what I want to be known for in this industry of online courses is that we just go beyond expectations of, we understand that there's lots of different situations and we can't address every situation in an online course because there's different stuff, right? Um, so that's why we do the live Q and A's. That's the place for you to really get the rest of the story from you. So Katie, it's going to be awesome. So we have new, um, the new content that I can tell you about for the coming up class in November for my course. Dave has new content too, um, but we are, I am so excited about ours. So we are creating an image photo stock gallery for our students. That means that we have gorgeous photos of all of our flowers and more. And we are gonna offer, we're gonna have in a library so our students can use them for their marketing on their websites and their emails because so many, A, when you're starting out, you don't have any great photos, right? Um, so we're gonna have this amazing image gallery for you to use as well as um, a new sales system for selling contactless. You know, the COVID-19 has brought out a lot of stuff, right? So we created, or Suzanne created, this amazing email, Sist beautiful emails, which she's gonna teach you how to make, how to use apps to take photos and create these beautiful images and then putting them in emails to get the customer. Um, these are things that we have heard people struggling with. I don't do it, y'all. I mean, I'm the flower farmer here. That is Suzanne's gift, and she has figured out how to do it. So she's gonna be teaching that session of how to sell your flowers through emails, um, to contact your customers. Um, and we'll talk about also the importance of having an email list. Um, so some great marketing information. And then she's gonna take you through and show you how to use the apps um, to build these amazing images. So Katie, put your seatbelt on. And here's the other great thing about online courses for those of you that aren't familiar. It's just like buying a book, y'all. 
Instead of sitting on your shelf, they're always in your device. You just have to log in and look at them. And all of our past students, for instance, um, so I have 2018 and 2019 students. All of those students will be getting this new information that we're preparing to launch with our November of this year course. So what happens is everybody's looking at the same, they're all logging into the same library. So when we add new bonus sessions, mini trainings, new resources, new PDFs, everybody gets it. And when we do that, we send an email out to all of our past students that says, hey, go in and have a look-see, we got something new for you. So in fact, your course gets better and better and better each time, each year. And as well as the Q&As are recorded and put in your library. So that means my students get their own Q&A this fall, but they also get to watch the Q&A from 2019 and 2018 because different people have different perspective. I mean, it's just so useful. So your course just gets bigger and bigger. So Katie, put on um, your seatbelt. So Stacy says, I think I'll try and plant for this year. You know, Stacy, I don't know where you are, but definitely. Um, and I can't, and once you plant a little cutting garden and get addicted, y'all, why do you think I'm a flower farmer? That's how it kind of happened and started 22, three, four years ago. So beware. Let's see what else we have here. Diane, I use cardboard all the time. It decomposes so nicely. So yeah, I um, realized that um, I was really fortunate for those beds. I had a sheet, four by eight sheets of cardboard. Did I say plywood a minute ago? Sorry y'all, cardboard. I had a four by eight sheet of cardboard that Steve brought home from work. And it, man, it was beautiful. I could just cut it out and put it down. Um, so Kim is asking, thanks for sharing. When did you plant those cool season transplants, November or February? Kim, it totally depends on where you live and your first and last frost dates. And my book, Cool Flowers, um, which has a free companion book study, a video book study along with it, um, at thegardenersworkshop.com. Go to the books, the store, go to the books, and the book is there, or you can buy it anywhere. Um, and then you can request... Um, if you sign up for our newsletter, we send you the immediate link to all the videos. It explains it all. Um, it's cool season hardy annuals, and it's the spring bloomers that are the most gorgeous and coveted bells of Ireland, sweet peas. Some of the stuff you saw in the bouquet, there's 30 in the book, um, and there's more and more that we're adding all the time. So it depends on where you are. Jennifer, you let the lemon basil get about that tall before you first cut it, then cut that deep, correct. So I, in these last two weeks, as we were running out of Bupleurum, which is a cool flower foliage, um, I was kind of running low on that for bouquet, so I started cutting basil desperately, and I was cutting it when the bloom was only about this tall. If you strip it hard and cut it early and get it inside, it held up really, really well. But the best time is to cut it when the bloom has begun to elongate, but really doesn't have flowers popping out of it yet. Um, and you will not believe, we I overplant the basil every year because if you cut that central stem out for your first harvest, those side shoots just grow beautifully. You will have so much more basil than you ever really need. April, those are perennial sunflowers under the window of the end, right? What variety are they? They are called, um, it's Heliopsis, Heliopsis. And there's two varieties there. The one that I love the most, which is a double, it looks just like a little daisy, a Shasta daisy, but it's yellow, um, was called New Hybrids. And the other side, I can't remember his name because he was a single, which is not my favorite. I can't remember the name of it. We do not sell the seeds of those um, and love them. This is like their third year there. Literally, we do nothing to them. They bloom all blooming summer long. When I'm not really busy, which doesn't happen much these days, um, I used to deadhead them, you know, cut the, you know, it's got a three, 
two buds and a bloom, I would just cut that little bloom about that deep off to just help when you deadhead flowers like that that are in your landscape, it lightens the load on the canopy so they're less likely to go down and helps the plant to bloom more. So, there you go. Christopher, you're awesome. Thank you so much. How much is the course? Okay, so Flower Farm, if you, um, Flower Farm and School Online, my course is $495, $495 as Dave's is, but you can buy them bundled together for $910, which I think is an $80 savings. And if you sign up for our newsletter, and I'm sorry y'all, I did not put a link on here. Just go to thegardenersworkshop.com and sign up for our newsletter anywhere on the website. It's right on the home page. It's on many of the course pages. Um, sign up, then that means you'll get an email from us tomorrow evening at four o'clock and there'll be a special offer, which is only good for four more hours. Um, so if you're not already on our email list, um, you'd have to wait until then to get the special offer, but the regular price is $4.95. Um, and as I said, um, that is for lifetime unlimited access. Is this the only time to sign up for either course? So, good question, Rachel. Thank you for asking that. So, Dave's course, which is the Perennials, Bulbs, and Woodies, the answer is yes. His course, we moved it. It used to run in January, which seemed like the best time to run it until we ran it one year and all of his students on their survey, you know, we send a survey at the end of the course. They all said, this course is so awesome, but how much more awesome would it be to be going through it and learning it right at the time that we need to be ordering this stuff and planning and to have access to Dave, you know, in your live Q and A's. Um, so we moved it. So Dave's course now runs once a year and it runs in late summer. It starts July 10th through mid-August. My course runs from the 1st of November to the mid of December. There will be another registration for my course. The only reason my course is also on sale now is so people can bundle and get that discount. Um, so my primary registration won't be until the 1st of all, October. Um, but if you buy, if you wanna take both, you should buy now, both of them, so you benefit from that $80 off bundle price. It is all very complex, y'all. Um, as we've added more and more um, instructors, we have now have, my goal in the courses that I offer is the opportunity for the domestic flower market, which means people that grow local flowers, whether you are in Belgium, France, Australia, the United States, Africa. Last year we had um, a student in Africa. It was the most interesting experience, y'all. She had to drive, she, she didn't do it. She actually had somebody. They had to drive 12 hours to get to the market that she was selling it. It was, a, anyway, so interesting. So we sell courses all over the world. Domestic local flowers are necessary. Um, and they, it's the way the flower market used to be 100 years ago, right? 50, 60, 70 years ago. And as the globalization of industry happened, um, as it is here in the United States, 80% of the flowers that are purchased are all imported from South America, typically. And it used to be the other way around. It used to be that 80% was grown in country and 20% was imported. And so my goal, as I became a teacher and speaker in the last 20 years, was to provide professional ways for people that wanna earn their living growing and dealing with flowers, the way to do that. So it started out with me teaching flower farming school, the business fundamental basics, which is what my course and is about, and growing annuals and building your garden and the whole system of farming. Then I knew I needed to add to Dave. Dave's class like takes people that are okay, I'm in it, I've got my farm functioning, um, I'm growing, you know, I, I, I think gardening and farming are two totally different animals. While you need to really love gardening to be a farmer, it's nothing the same. So once you make that transition and figure it out, which is what we do in my course, and how to set your garden up for the lowest maintenance, you do not have time to be dealing with weeds, y'all. We prevent weeds, 
all organically, no chemicals. And then it's time to expand what you're selling. You know, you wanna sell more to the customers that you have, and that's what Dave's course is about, adding that next level, bulbs, woodies, perennials. And Dave, for anyone that does not know Dave Dowling, he is like a blooming walking encyclopedia. He can answer every question you ask him. I mean, I learned the other night during our Facebook Live on Thursday night, this last Thursday night, I was taking notes. I mean, he's amazing. Anyway, so Dave was the next step. Then I knew that our students wanted to do what's called being farmer florists. Those are farmers that grow flowers and they wanted to do weddings. They wanted to do events. That is the maximum cash potential from growing your own flowers is by growing the flowers and doing events. You haven't got to grow 100% of the flowers, just a good portion of them. So we signed on Jenny Love, who is one of the leading farmer florists in the nation, um, and she did a course. She's got a school. That school runs in the fall also. That'll go on sale in October. Then the next natural step happened. Um, we now, which will be launching in January, it's called Florist School Online. Ellen Frost. Ellen is um, a florist in Baltimore that only uses local flowers. She only uses flowers grown within 100 miles of Baltimore and she works year round. Fascinating model, she's great, she is amazing. Anyway, my goal is to provide many different ways for people that wanna work with flowers to create a business and that's what we're all about, y'all. So I'm just, let's see here. Dawn, I'm always impressed on how you find time to share all your valuable information with us and still have an amazing business. Thank you so much. Hey, you're so welcome. But you know what, Dawn? You know how I find time? I spend my time doing the essential things for my business. And this is something that I think I shared. I'm not sure what night it was. I've talked so much now. I mean, now that we're in open um, registration, I do a lot of live events because that's what people, people need to be able to ask me questions. If I spent eight hours a day doing the right things for my business, and part of that is sharing my information, right? That impacts my business. Instead of me, by not knowing what to do, just kind of being busy. Um, I'm in a real transition period right now. Me personally, going from a high production flower farm to producing these courses and how, learn how to get that information into the right people's hands. Um, and I'm realizing now the things that used to be essential for me to do just two years ago, all of a sudden, those aren't the things that I need to be doing anymore. That's the things that somebody else needs to do in our, on our team because I have new things to do. And that is what makes business successful and growing and um, that's what keeps me moving forward. And um, I have a passion. Everybody that's on our instructor has the same passion that I do to teach and share and to help other people be successful. And when you feel that way, we, we just wanna share that, you know? So I appreciate you saying that, Dawn, um, but that's the whole point of why I do it. So I appreciate you sharing that um, with me. So Jessica, who is a student, the support of other students in this group is great as well as the instructors. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, oftentimes people, especially now, somebody will chime in with a problem or a question and before I can even read it, somebody else has chimed in and answered the question and it's like, I just wanna high five them. And they answer it like it's coming out of, you know, one of our mouths. It's like the right, you can tell they've really taken the information in. And here's the thing about the courses. Everything you need to be successful as a flower farmer or a stellar gardener, um, business person, entrepreneur is in the courses. It's what you do with the information. I've learned that so very, very much. Um, so I appreciate that, Jess. 
Allison, I'm all signed up for your course. Can't wait. Oh, Allison, I'd be so happy to have you there. Did y'all know I'm taking Dave's course? <laughs> so, as I said, things are changing here on the farm. We're downsizing, but we're growing more diversity. And so, I need help figuring out which perennials I want to plant and what bulbs I want to plant. And even though I've watched Dave's class, you have new eyes when you kind of know what it is you want to do and fill. Um, so I'll be like your student in Dave's course and be in the Facebook group together. Debbie, I still get questions answered from the class I took two years ago. Thank you so much. It just, customer, student, testimonials help people more than anything else. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Pam, signed up for both courses today. So looking forward. First off, I want to say to you, Pam, and Katie, I think, was the other person that signed up, um, and all of you that have signed up, Dave's course comes first. Y'all, put your seatbelts on. Dave is like, he will so overwhelm you with information, but here's the thing. You get to go back over it and watch it and take notes. Um, I'll be really honest with you. You know that whether you know it or not, what time is it? I have to go here shortly, y'all. We're supposed to be doing some drone footage here on the farm. We have to wait until the sun's off that garden out there. Um, that The way that I started doing online, producing online courses is I took an online course to teach me how to do online courses. And it was I was a fumbled mess at first. Anyway, revolutionized my life. And then I've taken several business courses online since then. Um, and... This morning, as I was scurrying at, you know, I think it was 4.30 or 5, I get up pretty early. We go to bed early, but I get up pretty early. I try to have quiet time um, before the day really starts to do some writing and reading. And um, I opened up my notebook back from that online course that I took. I took that course in 2017 and opened it up. And there, Lane, was the paper worksheet on the thing that I was looking for guidance on, and I had totally forgotten about it. And it made me just thumb through the notebook, and it's like, holy cow, I need, and that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm sitting down and just reviewing all of that <laughs> to refresh my brain, and that's the way it goes, and you really need to do that. With Dave, has a lot of handouts, and... Um, just print them out, get a notebook, print out all your stuff, and he'll tell you all that, and have a lot of blank paper, because you are going to write notes like a wild person. Um, he is just, he just oozes. It's like laying in the sun, and Dave is the sun. Um, you just take in all the rays, and um, I forget what we got talking about that. So, you guys, put your seatbelts on, but the joy of it is, you have lifetime access. You can go back over it. My plan of madness is with Dave's class is I'm going to cram watch it on Sunday afternoons. Typically, we don't work on Sundays and we usually go to church, then eat dinner with our family with, I mean, there's 26 of us. Then Steve and I come home and zonk out um, until we go to dinner with my family on Sunday night. It's like all we do is eat all day Sunday. And so what I've decided is for those six weeks during that time between meals, I'm cramming Dave's course and to figure out what I want to grow so I can get it ordered and kind of start thinking about all that. And then once the season slows down, this harvesting, crazy growing time, then I'll have time to stop and go back through it. And I set up a time, y'all. I don't know about you, but I'm so busy that I have to say, okay, every Tuesday and Wednesday um, from 10 to 12 or 11 to 12, I'm going to watch three sessions or whatever. Um, and that way, it just becomes a habit. That is the secret to my success, y'all. I'll tell you that. I am so structured. It's kind of crazy. But that's how I get it all done. People ask me that all the time. I refer back to your courses all the time. Highly recommend. Thank you. Signed up for both courses today. Will you talk about how to cut flowers in the course and the irrigation? Oh, yeah. So, um, there's a whole session on harvesting and conditioning. There's videos of me in the garden hooking up irrigation and talking about that. Um, and so, yes, 
any questions and I just want to say again anything that you have a little a specific question about that after you watch that subjects class if you still have the question you just ask it in a Q&A or and then pass um, and then post it on Facebook if you need to in the closed special group signed up for your course today super excited glad to have you guys it's gonna be so much fun y'all and I will tell you that we get better and better all the time. This is the first, we call it a launch, when we open the cart for registration. Because, you know, it's only for five days, right? So everything has to be right. Because of Suzanne, my sister, and Kelly, I have a team of seven people. Kelly and Suzanne and I are the ones that mastermind the whole course business. And this is the first launch that we did not have major snafus. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all. It's just looking back, but it's just so classic me. Wait until the last minute to do everything, and then it doesn't go like it's supposed to, and then you don't have any time. But today, um, and Kelly and Suzanne, I mean, this whole week, 24-7 pretty much, we are on our phones and on our computers answering questions for people, helping people. Um, to get because I understand I was just not long ago I wasn't very savvy with all this and I really was a mess the first I have to tell you this and I got to go y'all um, when I took that online course on how to take online courses I couldn't even figure out how to log in um, and so it was a mess so we make a real point of telling everybody the login is always on our website you don't have to go find an email to find it taking all these other people's online courses has taught me the dummy I'm, I'm almost 60 I'm 59 I'll be 60 in April I'm not tech I wasn't born tech savvy I've had to learn it all and we've kind of I don't want to say it's online courses for dummies but it is for a dummy like me um, and um, then we have young people. My niece, Kelly, who's our IT person, she, the combination between me and her, we are for all ages. Jennifer, I just ordered your book, Cool Flowers. I get it Tuesday. Now, Jennifer, be sure, I don't know where you ordered it from, and it doesn't matter. If you go to our website, thegardenersworkshop.com, go to the store, then go to the books and go to Cool Flowers, scroll down, I think, halfway, and there's a red link that says, Claim Your Free Book Study. Um, and when you sign up for our newsletter, which is what that does, we send you the instant link to all the videos so you can watch those. And it does, it's not the book on video, it's the rest of the story. So, man, I made that a long time ago. Um, made that back in 2016, but they're really good. Could you put flower courses and Dave's course on a CD and sell it that way? No, Jennifer, the problem with... The number one issue that we face doing online courses is protecting your intellectual properties. And so that's why you can't download our courses. Um, so let's just say if it was downloadable or on a CD, then you sell them and they can be shared with, and there's not many people that do that, but there are some. And that's the only way we can protect the only thing we have to sell, right? So it is not downloadable. You do have to have internet access um, to get on it. And that's pretty standard in this industry. There's just really no other way to do it. If we put it on CDs, it would be a whole lot more than what it is now because we would have to compensate for that potential. Do you water every day? No, we couldn't do drip irrigation this year and I think my flowers aren't growing from not enough water. That is quite possible. People could share with anyone as is unlimited if they put it in that form, yeah. So, I mean, we have a lot of people that live in Royal, a rural, Roy, rural, I can't even say the word, y'all. You know what I'm talking about, live in the middle of nowhere. And they actually go somewhere to watch their courses because they don't have strong enough internet. And that's just the way it is now. So when you take an online course, do you get to keep watching it over and over? Because I will forget, oh yeah. So Jennifer, here's the deal. It's just like buying a book, but instead of just picking up your book and reading it, you log in to your online library is what it's called. And there's a phone app for our um, online courses and they're all right there. You log in and there's your courses. If you go to thegardenersworkshop.com and go to Minor Dave's course page. Almost to the bottom, there's a link that says how do online courses work. 
If you click on that, there's a little short video that Suzanne made showing how you get in and then what it looks like in there. And you can watch it as many times as you want and it's lifetime access. You own it just like you own a book. Um, and that's amazing. I mean, that course that I took from 2017, I was watching it again this morning. So, so Jennifer, it doesn't matter if you bought it from Amazon or wherever you bought the book from, we will send you the free book study video companion. So go there and check it out. You're welcome, Dawn. Um, so guys, my man just came home and we gotta get our drone out and do the job here. Um, so, it was great talking to you guys, and hopefully we're going to so get those Japanese beetles, as I shared. Um, and I also want to say the book Vegetables Love Flowers is not about vegetables, y'all. It's about a cutting garden and how it benefits vegetables. A lot of great tips in there on stuff like what to do about Japanese beetles, as well as a small cutting garden. So, till we see you guys again, ciao!